Hi, this is JD Wizgo from selftaughtjapanese.com, and this is Transliterary Lab number 7, Bungaku Honyaku Labo Dai Nanaban. So, in case you're new to this series, um, Transliterary Lab is about taking a short Japanese uh, passage, typically fiction, and uh, doing some research to understand what it means um, in terms of the grammar and the words, vocabulary, and then performing a Japanese to English translation pretty much uh, on the fly here during the recording of the video. And I'll be doing a minimal pre research um, so I can do as much as possible during the video and I'll be talking about the process being used and um, keep in mind I'm not really looking to get a perfect end result um, it's more like to show you know the flow and some of the questions uh, things that are involved in translation alright so um, this time I'd like to do uh, the work called Lemon by um, Kaji Motojiro uh, which is a pretty famous piece uh, I'm sure this has been translated to English perhaps more than once um, and I haven't read the English translation I did listen to an audio narration of the Japanese uh, a while ago, maybe a year or two ago, and I don't remember it very well, although I do remember it was pretty difficult. Sa, hajimaru zo. Okay, so, <clears throat> this is the uh, Aozura Bunko entry for this uh, work, um, and I went ahead and I cut and paste the first paragraph into my trusty editor, and I broke it down by sentence, and I just cleaned up the uh, furigana. So, I'm pretty much ready to get started. So, as usual, I'm going to be reading um, line by line um, to kind of look at the Japanese original text and then we'll work through, you know, some of the words, the vocabulary, and, and we'll try to make a, a rough translation, uh, see how far we can get in, you know, roughly 20, 25 minutes. Um, and keep in mind, this is fairly difficult, um, so don't be frustrated if there's words you don't know. I mean, there's, there's definitely words in this that I, I'll probably have to look up. Um, and I may not know the readings for, which is totally okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, so we'll just go step by step. Okay, so first line. Um, Etai no shirenai fukitsuna tamashi ga watashi no kokoro o shishu osai tsukete ita. Okay, so I think I got most of those readings right. Um, so etai no shirenai um, is, this is kind of a set phrase. Uh, it basically means something that's... How should I say? <clears throat> Something that you're not familiar with or you're not known, sort of an unknown, unknown quantity. So let's see what the dictionary says. Mysterious, strange, sort of a set phrase here. You can see it sometimes it's written in kanji, but in our case it's written in hiragana, um, which is pretty much the same meaning. So we have a mysterious, strange, you know, sort of unknown would be another way to translate this. So fukitsu, um, of course, is unlucky. Um, ominous, sinister, you know, a bunch of negative meanings there. And then we have uh, tamashi, which is basically soul. Um, sorry, did I say tamashi? I think I misread this. Okay, it's actually katamari. I'm glad I checked. So while we're here, let's see what the difference between katamari in is and tamashi. And I think I've mistaken this one before. Tamashi is soul. Okay, so you can see here, um, they look pretty similar. The one on the right is uh, tamashi. And the one on the left is katamari. So now that I'm getting the right reading here, it's fukitsuna katamari, right, which is like a ball um, or a mass. Uh, there's a famous uh, game or series of games, uh, katamari damashi, which comes from the same word here. <coughs> so fukitsuna katamari ga watashi no kokoro o shishu. This literally you can see is kind of uh, from beginning to end, but I think it means like a itsumo or all the time. Um, Shiju, I pronounced that wrong as well. Shiju, uh, from beginning to end, always, all the time. Pretty much like I said. Um, and then we have this, which is a furigana for this. Is, I think this is a not a typically typically used kanji for this in this case. Osai tsukeru. So let's see. Typically, we would use this kanji, yeah. Um, but we get the meaning. It's basically holding it. I'm kind of gripping it. That kind of a sense. So basically, let's just go ahead and start with a rough translation. Um, <coughs> All right, so uh, a mysterious, ominous, all right, so we can just say mysterious. Now, we have mysterious. This is what I'm basically uh, translating as mysterious. Then we have this, which is fukitsu, which is ominous, uh, ominous. And then we have lump of something, ball. Let's see what other words we have. <clears throat> mass, clod, block, lump. Uh, just try mass for now. Mass. Um, 
they just say constantly grips my now we have a few options for Kokoro, right? It can mean uh, heart, maybe sometimes even soul, uh, sometimes mind. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna try mind for now, but we may come back to that. Um, so a mysterious ominous mask constantly grips your mind. I think this is okay initial uh, translation. So let's go to the second sentence, which is a bit longer. One of probably one of the more difficult sentences in this passage. All right, shōsō to ioka, kenō to ioka, sake o nonda ato ni futsuka yui ga aru yō ni sake o maenichi nonde iru to futsuka yui ni sōto shita jiki ga yatte kuru. Okay, so this word shōsō, um, it's definitely not a super common word. I have seen it before. Um, so here we have omo yō ni koto ga so it's basically being frustrating because things aren't going well um, like you would expect them to. Okay. <clears throat> and I think it is in the dictionary, the English to Japanese. It just probably uses different kanji. So if we go back to here, uh, this, yeah, looks like the word impatient. So you can see there is a different uh, kanji for the second, uh, looks like the second kanji of the word is different. But it's, it looks like it's the same meaning. That kind of fits with the definition we just saw. So, shōsō is impatience. Um, and now this tō ioka. So, this iō is sort of the, um, what I call a let's form, kind of like uh, tabemashō, you know, something like that. It's a, I think the more formal would be the um, volitional form, um, I think. But in this case, it's kind of like we can say this, or, you know, shall we say this, or shall we say this. So, to me, it's kind of like, no, shall we call it this? Shall we call it that? That you know, this is kind of um saying there's different ways to call it, or maybe the author doesn't know what to call it. So this is impatience. At least that's our rough translation. <clears throat> or frustration. I kind of like a little better. Kale is sort of like self hate. I think um, dislike hatred. Um, oh, it's just yeah, dislike hatred. Not necessarily self dislike hatred. Okay, so we can call it hatred. We can call it impatience. Now, there's basically this here, which looks like an M dash. Um, so let's just, while we're going, uh, whether shall I call it impatience or hatred, OK? Mm, all right, and we'll probably come back to that. Um, so we have sake o nonda ato ni futsukayoi ga aru yoni. So this is a pretty straightforward phrase. Um, basically, futsukayoi is, uh, and this is a strange kanji way, strange way of writing it. Typically, and it basically means a hangover, right? Futsukayoi. Okay, you can see this is the more typical way of writing to this, writing this, which is like two-day drunkenness, basically. Um, so, and this is apparently an older way of writing. Just curious is if, if this is even in the dictionary. Um, okay, a different reading, but it's the same word. So, it is in the Japanese, Japanese dictionary. So, um, this is basically like, um, now we have, I mean, the word hangover kind of implies after you drank anyway, but like uh, having a hangover after drinking too much. <clears throat> okay, sake o mainichi nonde iru to futsukayoi ni soto. So soto is sort of like, uh, I think, equivalent to, or uh, let's find a better word for that, considerable good, um, correspond. Yeah, this is what I'm looking for. Correspond, equivalent to, so something that's kind of matching up with something else suitable. Sake o mainichi nonde iru to futsukayoi ni soto shita jiki ga yatte kuru. Okay, so the understanding here is a little tricky, but let's see what we can work out with. Like having hangover um, after drinking too much. So then this is saying if we drink every day. <clears throat> um, I'm going to actually change this wording here. Just as uh, drinking too much causes a hangover if just say one for now if one drinks every day um, now I'm actually not quite sure 
what this passage is getting at here. Um, Jiki period, Jiki periods in history. Okay, so basically, literally, what this says is, if one drinks every day, then <coughs> the period comes that is equivalent to a hangover. And to be honest, I'm not sure if I completely understand this, but I'm just going to leave this somewhat literal translation, and we'll come back to it. All right? Sore ga kita no da. So this is clearly talking about this jiki ga yatte kuru. Now yatte kuru is sort of a literary way of just saying kuru, right? The yatte doesn't really have a significant um, nuance there, uh, except giving it sort of a, a flowery literary feeling. So, um, and I'm going to put here, and that is fine. Let's see, how can I say this? Um, it's come again. Right. This is kind of what I'm thinking here, thinking out loud. So, you know, it sounds like we're saying when we drink every day, um, there's basically still this period of having a hangover, uh, which comes every day, you know, even though we're drinking every day. Um, and it's basically something that's equivalent to having a hangover. So... Again, I'm going to have to come back to this to make sure my translation makes sense, but let's move on. Kore wa chotto ikenakatta, right? Ikenai is obviously um, something that's not good. Maybe it's morally or it's it's not a good idea. It's kind of like incorrect socially, that kind of thing. Like uh, you could say dame or naranai. There's a few different ways to do it. Um, so let's say this wasn't too good. Again, a rough translation, okay? And then we have... Kekkashita. Let me check the original text if this isn't a typo because that seems a little odd. Kekkashita. No, that's what it says. Kekkashita haisen. Haisen kataru ya shinken suijaku ga ikinai no de wa nai. Okay. And I noticed I actually mixed up two sentences on one, one line. So let me break this out. Um, so kekkashita, this expression I'm not too familiar with here result. So it's basically saying literally this is um, the result of something. So what I'm going to do is, and I'm going to actually see, is kekkashita actually an expression? I'm not too familiar with this usage, um, using it as a verb. So let's see what we have here. <clears throat> All right, uh, ironically, <laughs> we're seeing a lot of hits of the same paragraph. Okay, um, and now here, this is the perfective kekkashita. All right, so I'm just going to make a guess at this. Um, I could definitely do more research about this, um, but I'm guessing it's going to be something like as a result, because um, that's typically what uh, kekka is referring to. So, kataru, I think maybe it's catharsis. Let me check what this is. Um, katar, okay. I have actually seen this word before in one of my other translations, but it was written a different way. Um, and I'm not too familiar with the medical details of this. Let's see what Heisen is. Um, it's, the, it's obviously a lung condition. This is the word before Heisen. Um, and then I think it was this one, pulmonary apex. Did I have that right? Yeah, pulmonary apex. So, okay, now we have this condition here. So I'm just going to cut and paste this now. Um, we may need to clean it up later and make it a little more friendly to modern uh, ears. But let's uh, kind of finish out the sentence. Now, we just cut and paste this because we're probably going to throw it in somewhere. Um, <clears throat> and notice the grammar here. This, well, let's do this first actually. Shinken suijaku, um, I believe, is kind of like a, a nerve condition. But let's double check. So this is here. It's saying something with the nerves here. Okay. So yeah, I think. Let me see if there's a. It's also a card game, by the way. But that's not concentration. Yeah, let me see neurosegena. Yeah, I'm not too familiar with that. So I'm looking for a good name of this medical condition that's nervous breakdown. Okay, I don't know if that's correct. Okay, I'm seeing it in multiple places. So yeah, it sounds like this is probably a good... And the suijaku part is weakness, by the way, if you look at this, become weakened. So it's literally like your nervous, your uh, nerves are becoming weak, something like that. So if we... Let's see... Now the grammar here is ga ikenai no dewanai, right? So 
with this phrasing, this is basically saying it is not the case that the thing before, right? So let's say it wasn't that um, the, let's just say resultant, just as a rough guess of what this is about here. It wasn't that the resultant cataracts of the pulmonary apex. Yeah, this sounds really bad. <laughs> it's kind of overly long, but we'll just leave it for now just to keep it literal. And we'll come back to it. Or the, um, what was it called? Nervous breakdown. Breakdown. Oh, what's bad? So here I said two, uh, I said wasn't good. I kind of took the negative, but that's going to be a little messy, I think, because of the wording here. So um, let's see. This is somewhat bad. Let's just try it this way. Let's see how this works. It wasn't that the resultant catar of the pulmonary arteries or the nervous breakdown was bad. Okay, yeah, so so. Let's move on. Mata seo yaku yo na shaki nado ga ikenai no demo nai. So it's basically saying these are the things that that were not bad. Right? It was, it's something else. So seo yaku se is obviously back. Yaku is to burn. Um, seeing if there's another meaning here. Um, now here. What we should probably do is, here's Sewa Oyaku, but I don't think that's... So let's just look up Sewa Oyaku and see if this is actually a phrase, which looks like it's not a set phrase. So it's literally burning the back. So I'm trying to see if this is a set phrase or something the author has just kind of thrown in. Um, so we're seeing, of course, <laughs> the same thing, the same piece being brought up. So it looks like it's probably not a common expression. Um, so well, let's just try to uh, translate it literally for now. Um, so shakin is obviously debt, right? Nado, like etc. Ga ikenai no demonai. Okay. So in this mata here, you know, mata can mean um, again, but it can also mean also. So in this case, it's clearly um, also, right? So nor was um, the debt. Uh, nor was some debt. Now, burning back just sounds really bad. I don't, I don't think that's some. Um, I think he's using it in sort of a metaphorical way, right? Or some terrible, say, heart wrenching debt that was that was bad. So again, this sounds not great. Um, this was bad. So I just want to get the the rough literal, and then we'll. Come back to this, right? Ikenai no wa sono fukitsuna katamari da. Okay, so now now that I'm seeing this bad, I'm I'm starting to think at fault is going to be better. Um, so I'm just going to try to change this out. Was at fault? No, some was debt that was at fault. All right. Okay, so we'll just try this because I'm I'm getting a better feeling about that. What is that fault was the right and it's actually that ikenai no wa sono fukitsuna katamari da okay and again I accidentally put this fault was that and it's the one we talked about before I fukitsuna katamari was that and how did I translate it um I used it a ominous mass okay not sure if I like that wording but was that ominous mass let's move on. Alright, so we got a few words here. Izen is obviously before watashi yorokobasita. Um, basically, please me, made me happy type thing. Donna utsukushi ongakumo. So we're talking about this and that, and the grammar is like shinbo, which is I think like sort of a patience. It's, Type of thing, patience, endurance, and shinbo naranai is like um, I believe can't basically can't put up with um, not able to uh, deal with something. So shinbo naranai. Um, I'm sure if we did a Google on that, we'd probably get this in a dictionary somewhere. Um, I think I think yeah, you can see here, uh, gaman naranai, gaman deki nade. So basically unable to bear. So the grammar here is. Shinbo ga naranaku natte. So basically, became unable to bear something, right? <clears throat> so basically, I could no longer bear 
Um, now here, just say bear to listen to the most beautiful. Um, now this doesn't literally say most, but it's donna utsukushi ongakumo. So it's basically like no matter how beautiful it was, but I'm gonna kind of change that a bit. Most beautiful music that pleased me. Or now this is the same type of grammar here. Donna utsukushi. She is a poem. Right, Isetsu, I think, is a line of a poem, but let's double check. Uh, looks like it. Uh, so this is Hitokugiri, end of a section. So I think it's a little more vague, not necessarily a line. Um, it's a basically a, how would I say, a section. Um, so I'll just say line for now, but we could probably think about better ways to do this. Or maybe stanza, I'm not sure. What is a stanza? Let's double check. Uh, group of lines. Yeah, could be something related to a stanza. But this is for recurring unit. I'm not typing lines. I would just say, or actually, I type out listen, or listen to, or let's just say or because we already have listen, or the most beautiful line of poetry. Okay, so almost done with the rough draft. Let's move on. Did I forget anything here? No, I think I got the basics in. All right, now we have this word I'm not too familiar with. Chikuonki o kikasete morai ni waza waza dekakete itte mo saisho no ni san kobushi de fui ni tachi agatte shimaita kunaru. All right, so we got some complex words here. So this looks like a cowbell, maybe. This the first word is like a farm animals, I think. Um, chikuonki. Uh, hmm. Yeah, look, Americano Edison Hatsume. So Edison invented it. Um, and here we go. It's phonograph. Okay. <laughs> Not would have guessed that. Okay, it's a phonograph. So good we looked it up. So Kikase de Morai is basically have someone play it for me so I can hear it. Um, ni, this grammar I haven't seen too much. Waza waza de kakete itemo. So it's probably like, um, it's kind of like kiki ni de kakete itemo, right? So <clears throat> now we have this fui ni. This is like suddenly on a whim. You just kind of do it unexpectedly. So and I think this is talking about the beginning of the, the, in this case, it's a phonograph. So we're talking about the music again or the poetry, right? So this is one or two. I think this is kobushi. I'm not sure. Kobushi. Tremolo. Honestly, okay, this is probably more like what it is. Schultz, it's bar major. This makes more sense. Okay, so it's the first or second bar, right? So even if I were to uh, go out to have someone play me, um, then we can just say record, because I think that's what phonograph means in this context. You can double check. Kind of an old word. Yeah, it's, it's obviously record. Um, play me, somehow play me a... Uh, even if, if I were to go out and have someone play me a record, and I was always all the trouble, right? Or to go, you just say, go to all the trouble to leave the house. And I don't want to say go out twice. Even if I were to go to all the trouble to leave the house and have someone play a record for me, all right, this is capturing the Ikiaste uh, Morai part which is he's receiving a favor from somebody else, right? Um, I feel like I would... Now, Tachi Agaru is obviously stand up, right? Assuming he's kind of like trying to leave in the middle of or near the start of this listening uh, this, uh, to this record, right? So I feel like I would um, just... Yeah, Fuini, this is sort of like, a, like he can't help himself, right? It's a sudden surprise by chance. Feel like I would, I would be forced to get up um, after the first few measures. Okay, I could say two or three, but I'm just gonna say few measures. It sounds a little better. Ah, well, may, actually, let's try this. Maybe it's not that bad. Okay, almost done. Nani kaga watashi wo itatamarazu saseru no da. So I know itatamaranai, which is kind of like you can't stay in one place. So here, can't stay in there any longer. So it's basically you 
kind of have to go somewhere else, right? Now this grammar is uh, razu. The, the zu is kind of a negative uh, form. Saseru is to basically make make you um, do the verb. So it's making him so that he can't stay in that place anymore, right? And then we have the nolda, which is like a explanatory thing there, um, uh, which is probably the reason, right? The reason for this stuff above, right? Uh, because of this, right? It's almost like a kara, but not quite. Um, but it's a it's an explanation for what just came before, right? Um, so let's just try it this way. It's because <coughs> there's just something that is making. Now, what's another? What's a good word for this? Um, jittery, uh, impatient. Let's see. What we got impatient. Um, restless. Oh, I like the restless. That's good. I like that. Sounds really good. Okay. Last sentence. Sore de shiju watashi wa machi kara machi o. And I forgot the reading for this. Udo. Mm, let's double check. Fudo. All right, I was close. Fudo. So we got somebody who's kind of wandering, right? A vagabond, vagrant. Fudo. Fudo shi tsuzuke deita. Right. So. And sore de, it's kind of like with that or in that. Um, it, it's basically connecting to the previous paragraph. Um, so the way I read this is, you know, and also, or it's basically probably saying, and as a result, right? It's kind of a, a connecting connecting phrase there. So, um, and thus, um, I spend, so I'm just going to kind of change it, make this a little less literal, but let's see how it sounds. I, all right, how about this? I continue to spend my time wandering from city to city. And now, literally, it says always, but the shiju, but this, I mean, it's kind of implied. I can say continue spending my time. It kind of means the same thing. Okay, so um, I think we got a lot done in a short period of time. And I'm definitely a little uncomfortable about this part here. Um, but I think since we're almost to uh, 30 minutes, I want to take a break at this point, um, and we'll continue in the next uh, issue, the next episode, which will be eight. Um, but just to kind of finish out, I wanted to give a brief advertisement for uh, one of my books, which is a bilingual book of fairy tales by uh, Ogawa Mime, um, who is called by some as the father of modern Japanese fairy tales. Um, the in general the fairy tales are pretty easy um, you know they're simple grammar simple words relatively short just a few pages each um, so they're really good for people trying to break into Japanese literature um, they're about a hundred years old so you get some old words but it's it's surprisingly easy to follow and this book and there's actually a series of two books this is the second one but um every story has parallel Japanese English for all the stories and I also have a separate only uh, English, English section as well uh, in addition to the Japanese English parallel uh, versions of the story, so I have basically both versions. Um, so it's good if you want to, you know, practice reading Japanese and see, you know, what the meaning means. Um, so if you look at the YouTube video description, um, you can see a link to this book on Amazon. Please check it out if you're interested. And thank you for watching. Bye bye.